In this video, I'm gonna tell you the three lenses that every videographer needs, especially if you have a Nikon camera, but realistically, any damn camera. I'm gonna show you the exact three lenses that I recommend and the three lenses that I only have. If you watch all the way to the end, I have a little special gift for y'all, so stay tuned. So I did make a version of this way back, but I wanted to make an updated version on what type of lenses that you actually get. Because one of the majority of the comments that I get on this channel from people searching up Nikon lenses is, what's the best focal length? What's the best lens for me? And should I get the same lens, but a budget version? So which one should I recommend? So the first part is you have to figure out what it is are you filming? So for example, if you're filming just vlogging, talking head videos, and just pretty much videos for social content on YouTube, you wanna consider a wide angle lens. If you're filming and you're the person behind the camera and you're doing things like interviews, then you will wanna get a little bit more of a tighter lens. So you're looking at potentially a zoom lens so it has more versatility like a 17 to 50, or if you just want a closer shot with a lot of bokeh then you can get something like a 35 and last if you want to do things like wildlife photography videography you know you want to film night shots and have you're far away from the subject then you're shooting things like sports animal wildlife then you probably want a bigger and wider range zoom range so you're looking at let's say a 50 to 250 with a longer barrel or you're looking at something even of a longer barrel of like let's say focal length in terms of a 70 to 300 and that's mainly specifically for wildlife and you are like like yards and meters away from what you're actually shooting let's say you're in a race car racetrack and you're going you're taking videos or photos of you know like a NASCAR or something, right? You're gonna need a way bigger focal length and you're not gonna get what you're gonna get with, let's say, a 16 mil lens. You, those are two completely different things. So sit down with yourself and ask, ask yourself, what are you filming or shooting? The same principles apply. The next question you need to ask yourself is, what is it is your budget? So what's your budget? How much money you got in the bank that you're willing to reinvest into yourself so you can make content, whether that's for yourself, for fun, or for actual client work. So let's say you have a budget of $3,000. That budget is gonna look a lot different from let's say you get two lenses from a budget that's only, you only have 2,000 or even $1,000. You have to figure out what is the price point that you're willing to pay and there is a point of diminishing returns. So the more you invest into glass, let's say $5,000, $6,000 plus into lenses, there's also a diminishing return of the actual quality and sharpness. If you are a super, you know, photog and you're like the sharpness into the, you know, all the different how much elements there are this has 32 spherical elements with a vr2 and then yes you want to invest more because the more money you invest into the lenses the better glass it is but you have to consider like do you want to stick with native or you want to go more along the lines of a budget route so what i mean by that is there is a let's say a 35 mil 1.4 lens that is let's say for example nikon equivalent that's going to be like two thousand dollars or what you can do is you can go around trusted brands like you have sigma and tamra where you get the same type of uh, look and bokeh but for a fraction of the price so if you're gonna go around the native route you need to understand that native lenses what i mean by native is nikon with nikon lenses sony with sony lenses you're always gonna get better autofocus period i've noticed this from my own videos is that the better autofocus is when i use the kit lens compared to to let's say if i use an adapter if i use let's say a sigma lens it hunts a lot more you want to be able to have a crystal clear autofocus, especially if you're doing video, is you want to stick with native. But the downfall of that is you have to know that you're going to pay more money for more native glass. And if you're more on the budget and you want to do, let's say you only have $1,000 to spend, it would make more sense if you're on a budget to spend, let's say on third party lenses. So you have that option of versatility, but know that the autofocus is not going to be that tacked sharp. Now I'm going to talk about the three 
the, pretty much the only three lenses, the focal lengths that I recommend. And this varies from person to person, right? You might be a wildlife action sports videographer, or you might be like a weddings. It's very different. But for me, what I've used for my versatility of corporate clients as well as influencers, I like to stick with a kit lens, something that is light, compact for vlogs. So I use right now is a 16 to 50. 3.5 to 6.3. The only downside is, yes, I lose a lot of light, but it's light. You know, VR works great, as well as its overall native glass. So the autofocus, as you can see, is great. And this is, I'm shooting at 16 millimeters. The next lens I recommend is you want to get yourself a prime lens, right? I eventually, I'm going to upgrade to the 35 1.8S, but right now with the F to Z mount, I am using the one and only 35 1.8 this will give you that nice bokeh licious video as photos as you want with a 35 mil at 1.8 and it has as you can see here 52 millimeter thread the construction it is mainly primarily plastic at the front but you do have that metal backing and if you had one lens, this is the lens that I recommend everyone upgrade to. And if you want the difference between a 35 and 50, I think 50 is too tight. 35 is just right, especially if it's like on a crop body, you're already shooting at 50 technically on a 35 with that 1.5 crop factor. So take that into consideration. And what I use this for is portraits as well as interview videos where the subject is not moving. I would just put this on. I would be, let's say roughly like three, four feet away, six feet away, and you get that fully blurred background effect. It's great for corporate interviews, shooting in the rule of thirds. This is my go-to. So you, you have your 16 to 50, your 35, and what I also recommend is you get yourself a zoom. So I have two different zooms here that I recommend. So the first one is the good old Sigma 17 to 50. This is more of your budget-friendly option. It is 70 to 50 at a 2.8 constant aperture. So it's the equivalent of this kit lens I have right now, but the only difference is it can stay at 2.8. Whereas if I zoom in with this kit lens, as you can see, I lose light, right? Whereas if I have a constant zoom with the Sigma, is a budget under for under six hundred dollars is this lens it has vr or optical stabilizer as they like to call and uh, this is the lens i recommend if you're on a budget to have that good focal length 17 to 50 and you don't lose light and if you are once in a while let's say i film an influencer and they're on talking stage and they want me to record them talking and speaking then this kit lens is is not going to do well because it's way too far so i picked up the 17 to 50 right here kit lens so i have a good focal length so i'm covering all ranges of my subjects so this is 50 to 50 250 so it's essentially almost doing the math here it's like a 70 to 300 on the full frame equivalent correct me if i'm wrong and this is great i've made a video on this you can see how the focal length goes it's great for wildlife videography if you want to film wildlife sports videos as well as well as as long as you're like let's say a whole half of a football or a basketball court away this guy will be your choice because i can get you the autofocus is native it's native to the glass and it is the budget friendly version and yes there is the equivalent of this in more expensive glass but the more expensive the more lower you want the aperture to go the more expensive the glass is going to be but like i said here are the lenses that I recommend that you pick up, or these are the lenses that I actually use, so you don't have to go through the trial and error and figure out like which lens is right for me. All that is in the link below. Check out my Amazon storefront where I literally have like reviews and I do uh, videos on this already, so check out the products as well. Everything is in the link in description below. And those are the focal lengths that I use and I recommend to people if you're just starting out and you're like what's should I get like a 50 to 210 should I get like a 20 to 70 it really depends ask yourself the questions what are you filming what's your budget and uh, if you don't really know stick with the three recommended focal lengths that I recommend it can vary in terms of budget in terms of your aperture but get yourself let's say a decent 
like a 16 to 50 or a 17 to 50, they might vary. I personally don't recommend you get a 55 because that's way too tight if you're using a crop. Get a 55 if you're using a full body. And I would also recommend you don't get an 18 to 35 because that's not a lot of like varying in terms of my own shooting styles. So 16 to 50, you know, you want to stay within that focal rank. You want to get a 50 to 200 so you get you cover more just in case if you go into the wildlife you want to do you go on vacation somewhere your family photos you know it's a good portrait lens as well and you want to have you always want to have that bookylicious lens option available to your right hand side so you would get something like a 35 1.8 or 35 1.4 if your camera makes that so that was all my lens info on the Nikon Z50 specifically, but also if you have entry DSLRs, the, the whole shebang applies. Everything I said, link is in the description. Check out all my videos and reviews on it if you want to get my second opinion. Check that out and I actually vouch for things that I use. I'm not, no one sends me this. I actually pay my own money so you guys can take that for what it is. And if you want to get serious, link is in the description to get my free free camera guide so it helps you on all the exact specs that you actually want as well as if you want to get serious with video I do have a camera mastery guide so it helps you one hour crash course from me to you I help take you I essentially walk your hand to figure out how you film better looking videos especially if you're a beginner you want to check that out and my name is Peter you're watching Broke Visionary Collective where we all start with nothing but you can always upgrade your lenses you know and you can always create something Cheers, guys.